friends welcome back to our channel learn with gigs in this video i will discuss with you nine power bi interview questions which were recently asked in accenture for the power bi developer role these nine questions were provided to me by one of my linkedin connections and so i am creating this video so that you also get aware about those questions and how to answer them effectively and friends if you want to learn power bi sql excel and python as per the market standards which can basically make you stand out from the crowd then i would recommend you to go for code basics data analyst bootcamp 2.0 let me tell you what i'm talking about on the screen so this is the bootcamp that i was talking about whenever we go for a paid course or a paid bootcamp we have two criteria first is the quality of the content and the second one is affordability in both these areas this bootcamp is brilliant you will get this data analytics bootcamp 2.0 for rupees 6300 only and at the same time the quality is very good they also have these no no questions asked refund policy that means within 30 days if you found this bootcamp not suitable for you then they will not ask any single question for you and they will refund all of your money this bootcamp will cover 40 plus real scenarios eight business projects Four weeks of virtual internship. The overall duration of the bootcamp is of four months. A portfolio website to showcase your projects, which is very important for a fresher. And the validity of the course is for lifetime. You will be provided with a daily clearance support via private Discord community. That means if you are a part of this bootcamp, you can contact them for any of your issues. The next thing that I think is very important is the real-time industry projects based on different domains. So you will be creating projects in FMCG domain, hospitality domain, insurance and telecom domain, finance, sales, marketing, HR, and supply chain department. So this is a very unique point of this boot camp. The other important thing is they will provide complex data sets which contains more than seven million records, which we get in general in the real time project. If I talk about the skills that you will be learning in this boot camp journey is. first you will start with excel then power bi then sql then python and parallelly you will be taught about online credibility how online presence is important nowadays in the market they will guide you in resume preparation they will provide strategies to apply for the jobs in different companies they will help in interview preparation and they will also provide a virtual internship which which you can include in your resume too at the end after 4 months of hard work you will be job ready in the market so this is a brilliant boot camp to go for for a very affordable price i will provide the link of this boot camp in the description box of this video please do check it out so now let's proceed with those nine questions and answers and before that if you are new to the channel then do subscribe it and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the coming useful videos because the content like this you will not find anywhere else on youtube also you can follow me on instagram where you will find job related regular updates as well as short videos on data analytics domain and friends do like this video because your one like will give me the motivation to create more videos like this okay now let's see the first question so here you can see this is one to one linkedin chat and here you can see clearly he has mentioned that he had an interview with accenture and these are few scenario based questions so let's start with the first one so total equal to a into b divided by c into d how do you optimize this dax so this is a question how will you optimize this particular calculation if you have to do so now let's create a measure over here and see how we can answer this particular question i will name the measure as total so here i will consider this a b c d as variables okay so i will create a variable give it a random number like this variable a equal to 10 variable b equal to 20 variable c equal to 30 and variable d equal to 40 to optimize this what we will do we will create another variable here where e equal to here i will calculate a that is our variable a okay into our variable b similarly i will calculate where f equal to c into d so now both the products have been calculated in variable e and variable f now what i will do we have to calculate the division of e and f variable now here again i will create a variable g okay and in g i will make use of divide function because ultimately we have to divide e comma f 
विच कंटेन्स द वैल्यूज ऑफ ए इन टू बी एंड सी इन टू डी रेस्पेक्टिवली सो हेयर वी कैन मेक यूज ऑफ वेरिएबल्स टू कैलकुलेट द प्रोडक्ट फर्स्ट एंड देन आफ्टर दैट वी कैन मेक यूज ऑफ डिवाइड फंक्शन टू गेट द फाइनल रिजल्ट ओके आफ्टर दिस आई विल जस्ट रिटर्न द जी वेरिएबल सो इन दिस वे यू हैव टू एंसर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन नाउ लेट्स प्रोसीड विद द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्टार स्कीमा एंड स्नो फ्लेक्स स्कीमा सो दिस इज अ वेरी कॉमनली आस्ड क्वेश्चन द डिफरेंस बेसिकली सो हाउ टू एंसर दिस क्वेश्चन इफेक्टिवली सो इफ यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन स्टार स्कीमा सो यू हैव टू यूज सम टेक्निकल टर्म्स दैट इज रिक्वायर टू डिफाइन इट फॉर एग्जाम्पल ईच डायमेंशन इन अ स्टार स्कीमा इज इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय वन डायमेंशनल टेबल which contains a set of attributes okay the fact table is present at the center which contains the keys to every dimension table and overall structure looks like a star schema this is the first point that i have to speak of a star schema the second point when the fact table contains greater than equal to 80% of the data then in that case we should go for a star schema the performance will be very good okay so you have to answer like this now if i talk about snowflake schema you will say the dimension tables in the snowflake schema are normalized you have to make use of this term normalized okay what does that mean it is basically splitting the dimension tables into multiple dimension tables for example splitting the product table into product category as well as product sub category table and why we are doing this so that we have less redundant data so this is a very important point of snowflake schema and the next point that you can talk about snowflake schema is that this schema should be used when the dimension tables are huge in size in that case only if the dimension tables are huge in size and they have a lot of redundant data then we can go for a snowflake schema so these are the two main differences between star schema and a snowflake schema and that and that's how you have to answer this now the next question is what is data flows in power bi so basically data flows are not created in power bi desktop the data flows are created in power bi service so data flows are basically the live queries that run independently within the power bi service okay it is basically power query online so basically if you know that there is one particular table that is that has to be utilized in multiple reports so what you can do you, you can create a data flow you load that particular table do all the transformations then create your final table and after that utilize that final table with all the transformations in, in all the reports where it is required so in this way we are reusing the data flow okay so that is the main feature of a data flow we reuse the query across multiple reports i hope it is clear to you now the next question is different refreshes of power bi so for this particular question you have to talk about three different refreshes one is manual refresh okay manual or ad hoc refresh which you do it according to the requirement or according to the task second one is scheduled refresh in which if you have a on premise database then or an on premise data source so in that case gateways will be required to configure the databases or data servers and after that we can schedule it for a particular point of time in a day okay so this is the scheduled refresh and then third is the incremental refresh so you have to talk about incremental refresh so for incremental re refresh there are few steps that are predefined okay so you have to see a particular video on youtube about incremental refresh i have also discussed this in one of the previous videos so here there are some specific steps that you have to create for example you have to create two parameters one with the name as range start the second parameter with the name as range end and then you have to filter out the, your fact table with the help of these two parameters and then there are further steps so you, if you know about it then it will be very impactful while answering this question so manual schedule and incremental i hope it is clear to you now the next question is challenges you have faced during development of reports so there are lot of challenges that come in a day to day task right you have to like there is no particular thing that you can describe over here so you can you can be mentally prepared about this question before only right if something is as related to challenges 
so you can talk about something uh, related to data incompleteness from the source right you can talk about any particular dax related challenge you can talk about any particular uh, security related challenge if suppose you have to uh, you have to implement page level security okay this is sometimes also required so this is a very common challenge so you have to be specific about what kind of challenge you will be speaking you have you mentally prepared about it and then you speak the same in the interview so i hope it is clear the next question is what are field parameters so field parameters are something which were recently which was recently introduced by microsoft okay uh, earlier we had what if parameters in addition to what if parameter we have field parameters also so the most common use case of a field parameter is that if you have to create dynamic access in a bar chart or in a line chart so in that case these field parameters can be very beneficial dynamically you can change your access at one time you can see for example you can see product on an, uh, on access the next time you can see category the third time you can see customers so dynamically changing the access of your visual if you want to see the step by step procedure to implement the field parameters so you can watch out my previous one of the videos as you can see here scenario based on field parameters so you can watch how we can actually implement it in the power bi desktop okay it's very simple so just you just know about it how to create it all right now let's move ahead with the next question so the next question is which is question number 7 what how to keep the default total sales values even if the external users apply filters so what i understood from this question is he wants to ask if you have any particular uh, card visual containing total sales and if you have other other slices in your report now if you don't want to change your total sales value if you apply any kind of filter or slices on that particular page then how will you do that for example if i talk about this particular page if i uh, take this total sales in the card visual okay and so this is the this is my total sales okay now if i have a slicer over here for example category slicer okay i will make it is a slicer so if i click or a so it it will show the total sales of respective category like a but if i don't want to make the it change so how we can how we can restrict the total sales to not to change in that case what you can do you can go to this format tab and here you will have edit interactions so edit interaction gives you the facility of blocking or filtering okay so currently it is by default filtering so that's why you you saw the respective sale of category a but if you make it off so the total sales that is 1000 value will not change so with the help of edit interactions we can achieve this thing i hope it is clear to you now let me remove this two particular visuals Seventh number question is also clear to you. Now moving on to the next question that is role level security RLA. So this question you you can you assume it that this will be asked in the interview. Definitely it will be asked because it is something if you will not implement in your report then there is no point of creating a Power BI report. So definitely prepare this particular question about role level security. Role level security is basically restricting your data on the basis of logged in user. We have two types of role level security. One is static role level security the, the second one is dynamic role level security static role level security there are specific steps to implement dynamic role level security you have to know each and every step to the point so that the same steps you can answer it in front of the interviewer and you can watch about static role level security dynamic role level security on google or you can watch some video on youtube you will be clear about the steps required now moving on to the next question which is question number 9 which is I have a category column with values like A B C D. I want to show visual with X axis as C D A B. How to handle this scenario? This is a very good question. So basically, if this particular kind of question is asked, so what it what he is trying to say? For example, if I go to a new page, I have already created a dummy table for you. Here I have category as well as total sales. So as per the requirement, I have created a dummy table over here. So if I will click over here, category. and if i'll click over here on the total sales and i go with the bar chart so you can see we have the total sales on y axis and we have a b c d on the x axis right so now what the interviewer is asking so if my order is this like dcba i want the order like he wants the order in in this way he wants that the first value should be c then followed by d then a and then b c d a b so how to achieve this particular thing so to achieve this particular thing what i will do i will go to this particular table view and i will go to this particular table and i will create one column over here 
why I am creating a column over here you will get to know so I will name it as something like sim simple test equal to so here I will make use of if statement okay if so here you have to pick one particular column which will be helpful to sort this particular category column I can't choose the same category column to, to sort the category column itself it will create a circular dependency error so that's why I have here another column that is total sales I will utilize this particular column so so category and I have total sales column so total sales column if it is equal to uh, 300 right if it is 300 then give it as 1 why because my C should be on the top right I will just copy this particular code because I have to repeat these for other conditions also so I will paste this thrice more control V comma control V comma control V okay then four brackets one two three four now 300 was one then followed by D which is 400 right 400 so 400 I will give it as 2 then a right CD a B then it should be a so so hundred hundred will be my three and at the last my 200 will be it will be four right C D A B now we'll click on enter and let's see how we can achieve the final result so I have my respective values for category A B C D now what I will do I will click on this category column go to this sort by column and click on this test column once I have done this again I will go to the report page where I have created that visual now I will click on this particular visual go to this three ellipses and then sort axis and click on this category column and boom so right now it is a reverse order so what I have to do I have just go to the sort axis and click on this ascending order now you can clearly see here CDAB is the order in which it should show in the visual so I hope it is clear to you now all the questions that I have discussed in this particular Accenture interview it is clear to you now and and if you are asked anything related to this you can easily answer it in front of the interviewer so thank you for watching the complete video and share the video to all your friends and colleagues whoever are in need of this.